So today I have the pleasure of introducing one of our patient's family members. Um, she has been an amazing advocate for her sister and for her entire family and incredibly dedicated to her sister, Daniela. Luisa Vidal has been helping with managing her younger sister who has tuberous sclerosis and has played an active role in her medical care. Luisa graduated from Dutchess Community College and is currently in the process of looking for a transfer school. She completed a phlebotomy course and most rec recently finished a nursing assistant program at St. Vincent de Paul Nursing Home. Please give a warm welcome to Luisa Vidal. Hi, good morning. So I do have flashcards, but <laughs> I think I'm just going to speak because this cannot sum up the experience that I, you know, I've lived through my sister. And while it may have been difficult, I can tell you that I am so honored to be related to her. And through all, all the trials and um, tribulations that we've gone through, it's been worth it. And how do I, how do I start? I'm going to tell you a little bit about our story. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I believe I was 15, my sister was seven, um, she started um, feeling some uncommon symptoms for a seven-year-old. She was throwing up, she had blurry vision, she had severe headaches that weren't too common. And um, we went to our pediatrician and he gave us a referral for an MRI. But I kept seeing that her symptoms were very, very persistent. So I did what is mostly not recommended. I tried being a Google Doc, and I typed in the symptoms. So you know, long and behold, what, what's going to pop up is tumor, 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 tumor. I remember freaking out, bawling my eyes out, running to my sister's room, this little seven-year-old, skinny, tiny seven-year-old sitting on her bed watching cartoons, and here I am bawling my eyes out, holding her tight, and telling, I, I remember it to this day, telling her, please promise me that you're not sick, promise me that you're not sick, bawling my eyes out. And she was like, don't worry, I'm not sick. <laughs> so that same day, she just fainted out of nowhere. I remember we were in the living room, she just fainted out of nowhere, my mom was panicking because the last thing you the last thing you expect is for your little seven year old to be sick to to especially after I told her it was a tumor. She was like, no way. She was in denial. I mean, I remember having to be the one to react the quickest because my mom just froze, having to contact my neighbor and my neighbor carrying my sister's body and she, she was non-responsive and actually taking a ta they took a cab all the way to Montefiore, even though we lived right next to St. Barnabas. <laughs> and that's how much we, tr we trust this hospital. And that's how much we, I can't even begin to tell you, like the doctors at Montefiore are like a family to me. And now Dr. Malvari has joined us in, in that journey. And I am so grateful and I am so honored to say that if it wasn't for them, my sister would not be alive today. I can guarantee you that. And I am appreciative for those who are doing the research work. I know we all probably have those days and where you feel like you're not doing enough or things aren't working towards your advantage or but what you're doing is fantastic. I can tell you when she was at her youngest, because she had surgery twice. At first, there wasn't any sort of medicine to help her out. Everything was in clinical trials. So we weren't too sure. And thanks to Dr. Levy's su suggestions, because we obviously couldn't come up with you know, the, the best decisions on our own. He walked us through all this. He's been there every step of the way. And thank you for that. But at first there weren't, there weren't any medication. And now I can say, proudly say that my sister's 18 years old. 
She's 18 years old. She's going to go vote when I, she's waiting for me to go vote. <laughs> she's, I'm sorry if I'm just rambling around, rambling, but I've seen her at her worst. I've seen my sister not being able to respond. I've seen my sister in a rehabilitation center, strung up on medications, not be herself, not be able to have a conversation with her. She was not this, the Daniela that I knew. And little by little and with time, and like I said, with her doctors, our doctors, because they're my doctors too, <laughs> because it's, it's, it's been a, like I said, we've been a family. Without them, I, I don't know what I would do. I've, I've found the strength with seeing what she's been through. I found the strength seeing our doctors fight so hard, you know, dedicate their lives to, to find a cure, to find something. And I am hopeful, and I know that someday you guys will find a cure to, to, for tuberous sclerosis because a few years ago, we didn't even know that the possibility for a medication would exist. Her tubers have remained the same size. They haven't increased in size because of Affinitor. So I would just like to thank you guys because <laughs> really I'm just, I'm, all, all I am is her sister. You guys are actually the ones that are doing the work and I'm thankful for every one of you. Thank you. <laughs> Louisa, would you take a question? Oh, uh, here's Nico. Louisa, I, I'm sorry to correct you. Yeah. We are not doing the work. <laughs> you are doing the work. <laughs> and we need people like you and your families to make progress. And thank, thank you. you very much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you. <laughs>